cloud. There we go. Hello and welcome to Genius Tea Time. This is, we're going to be talking today with Noel Malloy. Is it Noel? Yes. Excellent, because I know I mispronounced your name the first time we met, which is unfortunate. I'm so sorry and thought it was Noel. That's all right. As, as my mother used to say, as long as you don't call me too early. Ah, you're all good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Noel is a visual and performance artist working in Ireland and around the world. His sculpture medium is found objects turned into semi-figurative artworks. He performs as well at symposiums, festivals, and events, curates exhibitions and events like Arts Cabaret, and organized the international event Crosswords Symposium 95. Um, his work is shown worldwide in exhibitions, and he's regularly invited to exhibit and perform at festivals and symposiums. Welcome, Noel. Okay. That's okay. wonderful. Do you want to tell us about Greenpeace for the, like, the maybe one person in the world who doesn't know who that is? Yeah. It's the organization we're benefiting. I, I doubt it. But, and it, yeah, the, the thing about Greenpeace is I've been a supporter of theirs for years, and they've been doing Trojan work. Uh, as watchdogs for the planet and not, and the knock-on effect of course is uh the rights of people uh, to 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 live their lives uh without uh you know the the dangers of of their uh, environments being poisoned or exploited and they have a they, there there is a numerous volunteer tears involved and of course, they do need funding to keep going. And uh, they have had, as 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 well documented, they have um, had great successes in preventing the destruction of the of the environment and that sort of thing, and, and uh, uh, stopping uh, uh, corporate greed from uh, abusing. Uh, people's lives and 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 the land, and as well as that, uh, some of them have put their lives at risk. Some of them devote their lives to to uh, as as watchdogs for the environment, and some of them have given their lives. So it's it's uh, why there are so many charities out there that I could have chosen. I thought, why not? Because of the general overall impact they have on the on 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 helping us to keep the planet clean and uh yeah. basically that's it it's a big job and they've been doing stalwart work for a it's, long time it's it's so enormous it's it's just unbelievable but i i i think without without them we would be in major problems we would have major problems because they call governments and corporations to book and prevent them from destroying basically what, what we need to live to to survive yeah and for future generations which is important exactly thank you would you like to start in on your talk yeah um uh I'm winging this now, so okay. <laughs> that's that's the know. part. That's well, what we're doing off, off the top of my head. So it's like, um, yeah, I'm forty years, over forty years, working in the arts, which which I I, I didn't realize until the other day when I was doing a CV thing, and I thought, oh my god, am I that long at it? <laughs> so, um, it seems like yesterday when I started out. And another thing is, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't claim to be an authority on anything but myself and my memories, my life, my experiences, and it's from that that I draw inspiration and uh, it, that informs the work I do. So I relate those experiences to what what is happening today and uh this is where the work basically comes from um i think it may be just to illustrate 
um, and give a sort of synopsis of my my family life, um, of of say uh, my my relatives and that sort of thing. Like I was, I was. Uh, I'm going to do this now. Rugame iglu malen in in milene negate agus oct kuiga oct agus an arch a vime koni vise oct gueltot agus an shin honic a long dina stock agus kursi an gueltot gudi dungarvan in Port uh, Larga. So basically, I'm not just have to say, I was born in Clamel, Tipperary in 1958. And uh, at that time, it was an Irish speaking area. It is no longer that because of the changes in population and uh, 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 people who didn't speak Irish moved into the area. So they 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 moved the the boundaries of of the it was called the Gueltoc. There's certain pockets throughout the country that are known as Gueltocs, which just means it's an Irish speaking area. <coughs> so um, so that's basically it. It's just a, a little illustration to show that while my main language is English, I am Irish, and we have a certain cultural way of thinking. Which is 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 different from uh, English, and words and and phrases in the Irish language have multiple meanings, and you have to know the language to get the feeling like it, it's poetic, it's pictorial. The language, and uh, there is a, a feeling that comes from when you speak the language that you don't get. It's, I suppose it's, it's similar to any language in a sense that you were born into, uh, that you, you have a certain, that cultural difference, you know, which is slight in a sense because of the interreaction we have now. Uh, you know, the world is a much smaller place, as I say, than what it was when I uh, was born. So the influences, etc., are greater. Excuse me. Um, yeah, so uh, my family, I suppose it, it was kind of a matriarchal uh, situation I was in because my grandmother was a very powerful and uh, strong individual. And uh, she was orphaned when she was a young woman. And uh, she had a brother and a sister. And they were of legal age. Her, my, my grandmother and her brother were of legal age. And um, uh, the young, her younger sister wasn't. So she was put in an orphanage while they 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 basically what they were trying to do was trying to survive, trying to work and survive. So uh, it wasn't possible for them to look after their siblings. So as a consequence of that, uh, because she wouldn't do that, she 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 never spoke to her sister again. Even though I met her, and she was an amazing woman, woman, uh, uh, my grandmother's sister. And I know I know all our family still today. So it's this type of thing, as well as that, her father, which we my uh, great grandfather, um, was sanctioned and ended up in a mental institution, and as a consequence of that, he took his own life. So this is how she became orphaned. So. And uh, her mother had died previously to that. Her husband, my grandfather, whom I never met and I have never seen a photograph of, fought in the First World War on the Somme. He was injured in his head uh, by shrapnel 
and as a consequence had a silver plate in the circuit. And as a consequence, he died from his injuries after returning from the war. Um, his, his, uh, her, my, my grandmother's um, uncle fought in the Boer War in Africa, the Second Boer War, uh, and uh, was a, a, a member of the British Army. And my uncle, who would be her son, my grandmother's son, was killed in Monte Cassino at, at the Battle of Monte Cassino. Uh, he was a prisoner of war there and died in, in and I was lucky to, uh, it was like I had promised my grandmother, my mother, that I would someday visit his grave. So I was able to go there uh, in 2015, I think it was, I went, and which was like 75 years after, and uh, just to say I'm here and to acknowledge him and that sort of thing. Even though his body was never found, he is memorialized on the stone in the uh, cemetery in um, at the foot of Monte Cassino. And I performed there as well as, as a tribute to him. So you can see that, that performance is on my performance website. Uh, where was I going with this? Yeah, my and my mother, who, who would have been a hard daughter, she was a single mom when she married my dad. So this is what I'm talking about, life and how it has affected me and my thinking. And my dad was a, a chef in the Irish Army, and he did two, two, two tours of duty in the Congo um, when there was war there. And um, uh, he, he tried, he, he, he met a young boy uh, who was orphaned because of the war and he tried to adopt him but legally because of the situation at the time he wasn't allowed so I could have had a half African brother you know what I mean so it's like it's 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 sad but, but so all these things you know they, they come to mind all these things when I'm doing when I'm working and uh yeah he also did a tour of duty on the northern border in in Ireland, the Northern Ireland border uh, during the war, there were for the uh, refugees who had to flee Northern Ireland uh, because of the 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 British Army, and uh, so he he so he he was uh, he was a very sporty type man and. Um, I got a lot of that from him. And as well as that, he he had a, a, a great love of the environment. And um, when I was growing up at the time, there was a policy in Ireland that every house that was built had to have a plot of land adjacent to it so people could uh, grow vegetables. So uh, that's what he did. So he would grow and I would help him. And this is what we're talking about repurposing. Everything was used, nothing was wasted. There was, you know, that that was landfill. You know, there was nothing going into landfill. And um, everything was utilized on to 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 do whatever, whatever job, you know, tools were repaired, they, they, they weren't discarded, they were, or if they couldn't be used for what they were originally intended, they were used for something else. So you had, so it was amazing because you had sort of like fences made out of uh, 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 beds. And so you had all this array of different, whatever, you, you know, you could come across. So everything, Everything was used. Everything was used. There was nothing wasted. And <clears throat> yeah, so he he taught me a lot about the the 
you know, how to uh, look after the environment and that sort of thing. And uh, there was no pesticides, there was no, it was all organic, as they say now, even though that word wasn't heard of. There's again, repurposing languages. You know, you, you didn't have words like that or repurposing or whatever. So it, it's like it was just it just was. And it, it was uh, uh, yeah, utilizing everything. And, and uh, I don't know, what, was it really because of the scarcity? Like in relative terms, it wasn't long after the Second World War. So there was a lot of, and we were a relatively new country at the time, uh, having come out of the Civil War. So Ireland, I suppose, was trying to find its feet uh, in the business world, in the international business, business world. So there was a lot of projects like Arden of Crusher taking place, which is a dam that was put on the Shannon to provide electricity. So that was a major project. So you have things like that happening. But agriculture was the dominant uh, industry at the time. And many of the time I worked with farmers and or where I lived, they, there was a major cider factory. So a lot of the land around where I lived, uh, uh, it was orchards, hundreds of orchards. And uh, as, as, as a young young man, we, we I would go and get work picking apples and this sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so uh, it, I'm, what I'm getting at is like, you know, as I mentioned, in terms of repurposing and reclaiming, it's reclaiming an attitude. It's not so much, I don't want to go back to, it's not like there were the good old days. There's no such thing. It was tough. It was hard work. There was abuse. There was, as much as there is today, there wasn't, but there was a culture and an attitude that, you looked after things. You didn't abuse the land. You didn't abuse, you know, you, you the neighbors. We were all like a, a, a tight community where yeah. you knew that if you needed help, there was somebody there to to help and that sort of thing. Um, so it was. It's just that mindset of, you know. You know, uh, nothing lasts forever, and you know we need to care, and especially care for future generations. We can't just come and abuse the land or whatever, and then expect you know our children and grandchildren to uh, bear the brunt and have to, to do the cleaning up, which is, is probably going to happen at some at some stage the way things are. So, and another thing, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have, our entertainment was radio. Radio or just getting out of the house into the fields, wherever, you know, doing whatever, um, playing around in the countryside and that sort of thing, or working or whatever. So it wasn't a case, of, uh, which I find very troubling these days when you see children, especially with their face stuck in a mobile phone all the time. It's like constant. It's like, why? Why do you need that? What's the thinking behind it? Do you need to be connected all the time? Do you need? Do you need? Is there some sort of? Uh, I don't know what the word is. There's some sort of. Uh, uh, what are you looking for? That you have to be connected like that 
all the time that you know they're so busy looking at the mobile phone they can't they can't see what else is around them you know it's, you know drop the phone go out and experience the countryside experience whatever go with you know arse around with your friends you know do something just don't be 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 zombified with these uh, gadgets you know it's like and i could happily i could happily live without the computer without the internet but i know now it's a necessary tool and you know to, to make contact with some great people like yourselves you know, and to be able to to talk like this and that sort of thing. But I use it as a tool. I don't use it as, as anything else. I, I don't allow myself to get involved in anything else, but it's like a document, a a a notice a notice board for me in here's my here's what I do, here's my work. And that's that's enough for me. Like there's too much, so much rubbish uh, connected with it that is crazy, and it's and it's all this these corporations and it's the you know the whole attitude of you know it's 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 about how much cash they can get from him, this sort of thing. So it's it's like why why bother? <clears throat> so yeah, so. Uh, and sort of kind of rambling a bit. Um, so yeah, so all all you know, all of these events, all of these experiences, and all of these memories um, that I have, uh, as I said, uh, inform my work. So I so I relate all of, all of that my growing up to the work and speak about be it social injustice or whatever. You'd like me to share some of it, your work on the screen? Yeah if, 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 yeah, if you want to pick something and... There we go. This is this Noel's is sculpt... Yeah. Oh, that's the... Is this is um, a sculpture. What would you yeah, like to share? Yeah. Um, just pick anything. All right, then. Let's see. This is my granddaughter. Nice. It's a, it's a portrait I did of her. Uh, I remember, uh, you know, it, it's always heart, it's always uh, not heart, um, heartwarming. Uh, when you hear something like she's eight now, and this 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 is her when she was about uh, maybe four or five, and um, she loved to collect. She loved butterflies, which she uh, and uh, ladybirds, and she she had a, a name for the ladybird, which was Riri. You know, it was like when she started talking, it was like a real butterfly. So she called it a Riri. And also on the bottom, you can see on the bottom left, there is a, a snail, which she collected. She used to collect snails and wood rice. You keep them in jars. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's amazing. And yeah, she she... Yeah, so she came. So one day um, we we had a tree in the in the garden that had to be um, cut down because it had died, mm -hmm. and uh, we were just uh, myself and my wife were talking about it, and we were just saying what the cost of it was, and she happened to overhear, um, and she offered to give us her money box to help pay for the tree <laughs> and i thought oh my god you know so i did this i did this portrait as as a as a tribute to her for what for that oh lovely what is it made from i mean i can actual, i can guess yeah the base of it is a satellite dish 
the the oval shape mm -hmm. and the the rest is plastics they're all plastics and they're all all of the plastics are from children's toys oh that's specifically yeah this is not this is something i do that depending on what i'm 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 work the, the, the whatever the team is of, of the work i try and relate the actual material to the team so oh neat so the the so this is why so, so all so. of the plastics are from old toys oh wow so with each of these pieces it's going to be specific to the topic of the piece mm. so if i scroll through yeah oh yeah this is a this is a fun piece i did and it, it's a i did in 21 it's a, the dancer and it's like um an irish dancer and it's entirely uh, made from metal scrap metal the the body of of the the dancer you can't see it but the sort of skeletal part of it is a uh child's bicycle and this the 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 actual dress it was the it, it this is another way i i work in that i I, my studio is like a scrapyard and um, or a junk shop or whatever. And I spotted this piece of metal that came in with a, a load of stuff I got from some friend. And I thought, yes, it's a dress. So then the idea came to me to to do this Irish dancer because of the, the way the, I, I have done nothing to the actual metal itself. It is as it was when I found it, as well as the other uh, pieces of metal I've used, except uh, some of them have been cut into shape. And um, it, it's uh, specifically uh, an Irish dancer. Nice. And, and the, the hair is, there are springs from a, a, a child's trampoline. And the way they're situated is, if you see Irish, if you see uh, Irish dancers, and they have these uh, curls, ringlets, we call them here, and they, they would bob up and down as they were dancing, you know. Sort of <laughs> so, so that's it. So, so it's a bit fun. So I kept it very raw and very uh, basic, and that's right. That that is life size. Oh, nice. Do you prefer to work larger? I always did, but then with the cost of shipping and the cost of, uh, you know, packing and all that sort of thing, I I thought that I would try work smaller, but then I've gone, I've, now I've gone back to, to working bigger. This is a portrait of a, a a brother-in-law of mine who sadly passed away a number of years ago mm. from cancer. And he was a genius of a musician. So uh, I had just had this idea to, 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 and he would love this because it's great fun because the actual guitar itself is made from a breadboard. Oh. And the, the, uh, the, uh, plastic pieces on on are from um, coat hangers and uh, the I can't remember exactly yeah the inside of um, the inside of of uh, of some machinery and that sort of the casing from the machine yeah and the picks the picks I made <laughs> the picks, I just. Um, I had a pick that he he used, so I I I used it as a template and uh, to cut out these picks, and it's like basically I had taken the I had worked from a photograph that was taken of him when he was playing, 
in a local bar and and this is how it sort of and again the watch called are you i love the the satellite dish the use of the satellite dish you know and it says it's it's sort of like you know the idea of the communication thing in a satellite dish you know that sort of appeals to me it is it also feels a little like those icon paintings the russian icon mm. ones where you'd have the uh yeah, or the cameos. Yeah, absolutely. Thing. So there, so there is sort of is you is sort of in action. You know, he's playing the, and as well as that, there are no strings on the guitar. I specifically didn't put strings because it'll never be played again. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Hello. This is, this is the Electrolux. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a dog. Uh, it's a, a vacuum cleaner. I I the whole idea about this piece was it's called nuclear yeah nucleus requiem, and it's like you have these two figures on a conveyor belt and they're slowly turning into car seats. Oh my goodness! Metamorphizing into car seats, and so the dog. Is changing from the into a back, uh, vacuum cleaner, and on the other side, then you have two mice, which are uh, changing oh. to blow heaters. Wow, that's amazing! So again, that idea of you know, there's a great book by uh, an Irish writer, Flann O'Brien, um, called "The Third Policeman." And in it, there's a passage where he speaks about the, the sergeant, the police sergeant, who gets about his beat on a bicycle. So he, he wonders how much of the bicycle is the policeman and how much of the policeman is the bicycle. Mm. So it's nice. that fun idea and the idea that, you know, how, how we change and how we're changed and you know what will we eventually come become? Interesting. Is yeah, I find I find that sort of fascinating. You know, and especially now, you know, I um, I was just reading there lately, um, in regards to AI, mm -hmm. and, and these amazing life lifelike robots. You know and. There was this, there's been a discussion as to how how will they affect humanity and you know oh. some are even saying that, that it, 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 they will be the end of of humanity these hmm. robots so who knows it's a debate that's going on but um yeah this is a piece called there's no going back and it was done for a project um called Interpretations. A friend of mine who is a singer and has a singer's group who, who, that, that meets regularly, he decided to create this vinyl record where he got a number of his fellow singers to uh, record um, particular songs. And then he invited a, a number of artists to uh, react to make work in reaction to the actual songs. Oh. But, so the songs I got was, the song I got, it was like, you know, uh, sort of potluck sort of thing. And uh, so the song I, I got was a song about, uh, not so much about immigration, but as some uh, more about so, uh, somebody who was longing to return home after having emigrated and spending their life working in another country, and uh, mm -hmm. so in this in the song it, it it mentions New York and this sort of thing. So, and, it, so he's he's kind of looking. He's at the window looking out on on the street, and then he's one he's turning around and he's wondering. And um, there's no going back. There's there's nobody there to go back to. Oh. Wow! Yeah, all his, you know, this is the song. His family and 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 relatives are gone. So, 
there's nothing there for him, even though he'd like to go back. What are the pieces that you used for it? This is all scrap metal um, or uh, 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 metal objects. The the sort of the arms and that sort of thing. I think they came from a a child's uh, trampoline. Um, the hands and face and that sort are made up of machine parts and um, uh, uh, nuts and bolts. The the actual bottom area is is a child's handlebars. So you have all these sort of um, and this is something as well I like to do is I like to keep the rawness of, of the object so that it's recognizable. And it's great when, especially when 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 uh, when they're on the exhibit and children see them and they're picking out the various pieces. And that's a bicycle, and that's a a fork or a, or a spoon or whatever. And the actual uh, um, what you call it, the the skeletal part, the the um, the backbone attitude is is uh, there. Uh, pins from uh, surgery that would be used in surgery to oh. mend broken legs and that sort of thing. Oh. So it has all these connotations. So it's actually a double portrait in that you get two faces. There's one face this way, and then it, when you look at them, face uh. up, face. So it sort of changes. Nice. Oh, you have the photo on the windowsill. It's it's a composite of a family photograph. Oh. But you should see this piece now. This piece I've had uh, just uh, out on the outside of my studio for the last number of uh, while. And it has started to take on a different patina because, because of the raw metal, certain parts of it are rusting. So it's taken on a different color and that sort of thing. So you have, so the actual photograph thing is um, is is brown. It's it's kind of rusty. It's a lovely orangey brown sort of color sort of thing. And and then the the, the drawings, which I draw with um, an electric arc welder, so it's it's drawn blind and. Uh, they, they they have taken on a sort of uh, hue, a resonance, the, the, the edges and that sort of thing. So it, it, it's kind of strange. And actually, this piece was shortlisted for the International Painter and Sculptor Award, the Lasque Award, that is run out of China. Well so done, I, you. I was, really, I was really proud of that. So, yeah, so... It was great. Congratulations. Aha, this is uh, titled uh, Lance Corporal Thomas Power, and it's a portrait of my uncle. Ah. Oh. I mentioned earlier who, who was killed at Monte Cassino. The thing about I wanted to do is I had this, I found this old photograph. I thought I, you know, it was amazing I coming across this photograph. And um, of him in uniform uh, in the British Army, and uh, uh, he was in the Irish Fusiliers, and he he went because there was no work in Ireland, so as well as the the excitement of travelling and that sort of thing, so he spent time in Africa. On the camp during the Second World War in Africa and, and India, and um, eventually ended up in uh, in the invasion of Italy. But he 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 he, he fought through the Battle of Monte Cassino, and uh, and went on from there. And they were advancing up towards Rome, and he was captured uh, by the Germans, and, and uh, within a 
POW camp. And then they, the Germans decided to move all the POWs to Germany. So they put them on a train. And the thing about it was the train wasn't, uh, there was no markings on the train to say what it was. You know, like there would have been, say, for the Red Cross would have been on medical trains or whatever. But um, he, they were traveling to, uh, it was some, it's somewhere near, I think it's somewhere near Florence, a place called Arona, and they were crossing a bridge and the uh, American Air Force spotted this train and bombed it. And uh, nearly all of them were killed. So there was a, a sort of a, a, a total mix of nationalities on this train. So they're all they're all memorialized and buried together in Monte Cassino. As I said, his body was never found, but they did. And, and they probably found his dog tags or something. So um, so he is memorialized there, and uh, uh, and I was grateful to get the opportunity to visit his uh, memorial site. But there was an inquiry after the event and a uh, 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 war crime inquiry and it never it never came to any conclusion mm. and the uh it was the first time the phrase uh friendly fire was used in relation to mm. uh you know your allies being killed by our allies sort of thing. So that's where that, that phrase started. So I just thought I would do this. So what it is, it's like, and it's very raw again, and it's like um, pieces of machinery, like almost like shrapnel, and uh, uh, just burned down uh, willy nearly with the uh, welder. So, yeah. No. Oh. Is that a plasma cutter to cut the background? I actually used the electric welder to do that. Gotcha. Yeah, I I I I did a lot of drawing just using the electric welder on sheet metal. So yeah, oh. so it's an interesting way of doing it because you're 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 drawing blind. You can't actually see. So you're feeling the drawing rather than seeing. Wow. Yeah, so that's sort of side view. A very tactile way of doing it. Yeah. And oh, I like yeah. I like bling. Yes. <laughs> I see this. And, uh the, the the you know, I like I have done I don't know many, I've lost count of the amount of sort of king's heads I've done. And uh it's just it's fun and it's it's just um interesting you know the materials and uh i think the the actual the brown piece is a jelly mold <laughs> and the 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 other pieces are, are are pieces of machinery and the actual crown is a sauce saucepan a pot nice and so there are two others in this there are two more this this was um uh uh uh, a three piece work I did um, called We Three Kings and it was done and it relates to the the Christmas car We Three Kings and it was done for, specifically for an exhibition that was held in in an art centre in, in, in County Clare mm. so yeah interesting oh this is yeah that again this this is uh, just uh, in relation to my performance this was it's called dada mama the child rising and this was done at the time when um there was uh, centenary commemorations of the 1916 rising mm. 
oh. here in Ireland. Mm. And um, uh, as well, in, in 1916 as well, you had Dada. Well, Dada was uh, mm. Uh, mm. born. Yeah. Dadaism. And also you had uh, Karl Marx and the uh, beginnings of the the of communism and Russian Revolution and Das Kapital. Das Kapital? No. What was the book that Marx wrote? Um, uh, I'll have have to look it up. Yeah, and uh, you know about and of course involved with Lenin and all of all of these guys. So, as well as that, I was looking, and this was sort of a a, a kind of commission through the local Roscommon Arts Office uh, was funded. And this was the second performance I did of, of that commission. And this was done for a, a show that was held at Christmas called The Red Dot, uh, curated by a friend of mine. And um, I'm referencing the... During the uh, during the, the the Easter rising, which was like a, a, a revolution here in Ireland uh, against the British, um, thirty four children were killed in the fighting in in Dublin. Innocent bystanders who happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and were hit by stray bullets and stuff. So. I want to commemorate that. So this is the, hence the name Dada Mama. Mm. And uh, yeah, Das Kapital, that's right. And um, it's just to, to speak of those children. And there was loads of photographs of, of the people who were involved in the rising. And uh, the 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 IRA and all of these guys and uh, some of the atrocities that happened and some photographs of some of the children. Oh. So uh, this was actually I. This is as I was saying about performing in different places. This uh, begun outside a supermarket in town in Roscommon town. Oh. I pushed a pram also dressed in, in in a certain costume. And I pushed a pram throughout the town. So it was interesting, the reaction I got. And then I eventually, had, this was a pop-up gallery. It was, okay. a, it had been a, 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 a video store before that. So, uh, yeah, so it was just used for, for a couple of weeks that year. So Would you like to show some of the other performances? Yeah, if you want, you could go. Um, yeah, we could just go through here. Um, post box, the top one that was done uh, in twenty one, and again it was done for the International Multimedia Art Festival in Nova Sad, and it uh, I collaborated with my son, and. Uh, we it, it, it was done live in my sitting room and the it, it was done in relation to COVID and uh, this idea that uh, uh, speaking of this this man who wanted who was away from his uh, his girlfriend and wanted to be with her and this sort of thing, but she didn't want to have anything to do with him. So he ends up and he gets this box and he posts himself to her. And she can't get the box open. So she's with a friend and the friend decides to use the scissors and they can't uh, cut the, the tape. So just sticks the scissors into the box and, and kills the guy. So it's a well-known uh, Velvet Underground song. So I use the, the uh, words from the song as, as the story. 
Wow. So it's just that idea of longing so much to 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 be with somebody who has no interest in you and this sort of thing. And this whole stifling feeling of COVID and how how do you connect and this sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh but... yeah. Um would you would you just say play somewhere someone the video? I will do. Yeah, because I'm I'm just gonna take a toilet break. Oh, that's a very important thing. <laughs> yeah. You should do that. Yeah. Thank you. <gasps> Are those baby dolls? Yes, they look like it. <laughs> wow. Did it not play? It's playing. Yeah. The, the sound is... We are seeing you with the baby dolls. Yeah. And tearing up the world map. Yeah. The sound doesn't seem to be strange. Are those meant to be bombs attached to you? It's meant to be a sort of suicide vest, but the the whole thing about the child, the child, the dolls, the babies, the dolls connected to it. I I'm just, I'm wondering what what it is that the volume isn't working. Should work. No, it is working okay. Um, <clears throat> I just can't hear hear you and it at the same time. Oh, I I see what you mean. Okay, yeah. So th th this. Uh, Performance was done uh, in a a bar called Murray's Bar, which is in a village not far from here, uh, called Nacrockery, where I've done a number of performances, which I love, which is my favorite place to perform, by the way. And, okay. Um, uh, it was done for a community fundraiser for the Afghan Appeal. Uh, and... Uh, was organized by a fr friend of mine. So that was in October 21. So what I want, you know, what I did was I took the alphabet. So I, you know, I start and I, I, I got all these sounds like, um, and I started like somewhere someone is arriving, we'll say for A. And mm. then for B, someone is bombing, or C, somebody is, I can't remember exactly the, the dialogue, but each, each, I used each letter of the alphabet as a phrase and then used a sound to accentuate what was happening. Okay. So, so it, it, it basically what it was saying was, you know, people are, involved in all of these events that are happening you know people are being murdered people are being bombed raped abused you know as what was happening in afghan yeah. basically that was it so it worked it it so yeah it was great because there was uh i think it was something that the last count was near ten thousand uh euro was was uh collected mm. for the appeal so i was happy that, that 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 happened you know that's good i was ask, going to ask if those are those meant to be bombs attached to you along with the children yeah it's gelignite it's uh, ah it's, it's actual gelignite no it's um it's made to look like sand okay <laughs> and uh uh it's, it's it's like a suicide vest. I've used yep. this actual uh, 
best before when I did the first performance to commemorate the 1916 rising. Oh wow! So it's it's um, and it's that you know that that quirkiness of it, like you know the innocence. There's mm. always innocence involved. Yeah. You know, like this is the the statistic that in war. The, the most people that die in war are women and children. Yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. You, know, we think it, you would think it would be soldiers, but it's not. No. And of course, we can see that today with Ukraine. Oof. Yeah. Which, which is horrifying. Absolutely. Especially with the children being kidnapped and women being raped, it's just yeah. You know, it's, sometimes it's like you don't want to let your mind wander because you would go mad thinking of these the atrocities that are happening. It is true. No, a lot of the. A lot of your pieces do seem to work on on personal remembrance and on war. Yeah, and yeah. because but that's because of my background, my yeah, of course connection with it. You you know you learn from your past, and that's how you can survive in the future and go get on in the future. And it's like you have to acknowledge your past. You know, of course, and, um, that's. What made me so it's like yeah. uh, it's part of me, so I can't it's there. It's just comes out then. What are the things that you would like your art to be remembered for or you to be remembered for? Basically that I did good work. Yeah. Absolutely. All, you know, uh you know, whether I make Though I have gotten reaction that have, people have changed their way of thinking after seeing a, a work of mine, you know, or, or have changed their attitudes towards certain things, which is incredible, and which is yeah. humbling and and sort of thing. And other people who come to me and they, they say, uh, uh, I, I got involved in the arts because I saw your work and how you work and and I and I felt I could do it because of the, the materials and stuff I use. Ah. They, felt, they felt that um, a way in to to creating art. Nice. And there was one one particular friend who, during COVID, I. I regularly put up uh, photographs of work I was doing. Mm -hmm. She said, one of the greatest compliments I ever, I ever got, she said it, it sustained her through <gasps> lockdown. To see that work every day, it got her through mentally. I don't know that you can get higher praise than that. No, no, <laughs> no. And, and, uh, who else said to me one time, it was, yeah, my, my brother-in-law that I spoke about that died, sadly. He said, after a performance I did, he said, um, I wish I could be inside your head. <laughs> I said, what? I wish, you know, I, you know, get in. I, wow, I said, what a, what a compliment, you know. It is. Do you feel like your head is also sort of a scrap heap? Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. It's like, um, it's like a, a, I can't turn it off. <laughs> it's just, you know. And I, 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 I go to bed, and sometimes it's like, you know, and it, and and uh, especially if I'm working on a particular project, yeah. and I'm up and down because I have to take notes. Yeah, I have to write down notes, so. I get up and I, I'm up and down and whatever. Drive my wife mad, but anyway, 
Um, that's that's the way I think. Because, and I have to, especially these days with memory, I have to write everything down because if I don't, it's gone. That is one thing then that the technology is pretty good for, for helping record that. So sometimes yeah. you don't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the, you know, always, as I always say, you know, when I used to teach and that sort of thing, documentation, documentation, documentation. Yep. Because it's... you can, you, because you're going to forget and, you know, you can look back and you can see, yeah, you know, and it helps inform new work. Absolutely. Um, Karen, was there anything you would like to ask? Thank you for uh, thank you for asking, Laura. Thank you for hosting. Noel, thank you for sharing. I know this is just thank you for being a, here. But a small sampling of your work. I what came to mind? You talked about your family's history and how that influenced you. But I'm wondering how did you first start working as an artist, and specifically with with found objects and when did you decide you know what I think I can piece this together to make something well as I was talking about um when I was a boy and everything was repurposed and nothing was wasted it was sort of there in me you know from from the outset and then as I went through what would be the equivalent of high school I learn different uh of course you did the basics drawing painting um print making and this sort of thing and and some sculpture and uh, photography and then when i went down to college and uh, in my first year foundation year uh, it, it was very experimental and uh i was trying very I did casting I used plaster much in the same vein as George Segal uh, <laughs> and uh, fiberglass resin much like Edward Kleinholz and uh, all all of this and then I, I started to discover uh, scrap and I started to discover um, data and I like mm. the attitude of Dada and how they took a waste piece of whatever and created created art from it. So I I started out then uh, just using uh, metal and creating and through talking to my tutors and that sort of thing, I was introduced to various other artists and this sort of thing, and. Wow, you know, and I used to take a trip, a regular trip on the bus. I used to get the bus from, I was in Limerick City studying, and I would get the bus, it was a double-decker bus, to the dump, to the local landfill. And sometimes they wouldn't let me on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have a bag of, God knows what I'd have in the bag, you know. And I'd be smelling. <laughs> what are you doing? You can't come on my bus. <laughs> Sometimes it, it it was it was a good walk from the from the landfill to the college, and I would go I would go to house clearances, and it's fascinating. And um, the objects, yep. people own and people leave behind after yeah. you know, die. and it's a shame because that you know they sort of disappear because um yeah. i kind of believe that the ob the objects themselves have they have a memory hmm. there's a memory in the object that it, uh, somebody said to me one time do you think they have a soul I said, no, not a soul. It's like a memory. It's like a, an imprint, mm. you know, from being used and from, yeah, you know, somebody held that kettle or that fork or knife or whatever 
Yeah. And their imprint is on that. And that fascinates me and to give it an, and to give it another life as something else, you know, to repurpose it. it you know, that that yeah. sends shivers every time I think of that. And I, when I get it, when somebody brings me a whole lot of stuff like there not long ago, um, a friend, again, he, he moved into this house uh, and the previous occupier who had died I'd left a lot of stuff in the house, so of course he didn't want it. So it's like, and here was this box, and it had all these medals from Maritons. He was a Maritan runner, and he ran Maritons, Maritons mm. all over the world. And it's like, mm. you know, I've used some of them in in work, but it's kind of. I don't know if I really want to use them because to me, the, yeah. it would have been so precious to him having mm. achieved all this. And then for me, what am I doing? You know, maybe I will, maybe I won't, but I'll just keep them there anyway. They'll be there in the box. And it's like, uh, there, there, there's, there's something magical, something spiritual about, you know, that I find, I feel that's in the objects that that you're sort of uh, desecrating it in a sense by, you know. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, but I keep, I'll keep them, and maybe I'll do a piece that uh, someday will 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 you know do them justice and bring them to life again. Sorry, Karen, did you want to say something? Uh, well. I just, if I may share, and if this uh, inspires you, I did many, many 5K races, much shorter than a marathon, but I have a lot of those medals as well. And yeah. I've kept them and I've thought about making them into a chimes. So mm. that's an idea for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually have done, I have used them in it. it the, 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 it was a piece there that Laura showed. Um, it's called Spider Woman, and it was a commission I did. And it's about a friend of mine is setting up a park, a sort of nature, environmental sort of thing. And he has um, big connections with uh, Native Americans. And he wants this, he showed me this image of a, a Native American woman, and she had this. Uh, dressed in this blanket sort of thing so he wanted something like that so i created this sculpture um and as well as that there was connections uh with the six nations mm. uh, in that it had had feathers to the side it's life size over life size mm. and uh they they swivel in the wind and inside then there is uh, long pieces of metal mm -hmm. stainless steel and they they work as chimes so you get this action of the feathers moving and the light because it's stainless steel so you'll get the light hitting them nice inside then you get the and some of the 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 clappers that are used for the chimes um, are made of wood. Hmm. So you get a different sound. So it's like being at a powwow. Oh. That sound. Awesome. Interesting. The interesting sounds. That, that amazing, amazing events, powwows. Yeah. Yeah. Very so, cool. That was the whole idea. So it's got all, all it's, it's covered in symbols. Spider Woman, of course. Uh, I can't remember the exact how to pronounce the the Navajo uh, name for her, but she's a deity who came, a uh, great spirit who came and uh, taught the women how to weave. Ah, uh, so it's, that's in, in the Navajo tradition. The spider grandmother. Yeah, I believe. I'm putting that in the chat. 
And I'm going to just turn off the recording because we're trying to keep them at about an hour. You can keep stop okay. talking if you would like. Fine, whatever. And thank you very much. This was lovely. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Karen, for being here. My pleasure.